Welcome to the Minority Business Report, where we talk about positive things that are happening in Anne Arundel County. I am Joanne Jackson, Anne Arundel County Minority Business Enterprise Coordinator. My guests today are Barbara Gill, organizer and spiritual leader of Chesapeake Coffee Connections, and Kim Lavender, a local artist and member of the Muddy Creek Artists Guild. We are delighted to have you on our show today. Thank you. Glad, Glad to, be, to here. be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before we get started, would you tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what it is that you do? I'll start with Kim. Okay. My name is Kim Lavender, and I'm a native Marylander. I grew up in Prince George's County, and I graduated from University of Maryland in College Park. I have my whole life been one to dabble with creative things. I have a big imagination. I was a much, very much a daydreamer as a child, and I spent a lot of time drawing and coloring and making things out of anything I could get my hands on. <laughs> and then as I got a little bit older, I, I became very much somebody who enjoyed looking at art, but would look and go, oh, I could never do that. <laughs> so I actually never even attempted to paint. And um, after I graduated from college, I, I worked for a few years. Um, I managed an office, and a commercial real estate office. And I eventually got married and decided to be a stay-at-home mom. And that's what I did for 17 years. I, and I did a lot of fun, creative stuff with my children. I was a very active volunteer, so I always had my hands in something and chairing things here and there in their schools. And, um, they grew up and I started thinking, well, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> and I started working actually as an assistant at a Montessori school. Mm -hmm. And everything kind of unfolded after that, but we mm -hmm. might talk about that a little bit later. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And so you went to school Mm -hmm. at the University of Maryland? I actually started at Prince George's Community College. I got an mm -hmm. associate's degree and then I went to University of Maryland and I really honestly did not know what I was going to do with my life. Mm -hmm. So I graduated with a Bachelor of General Studies, which is kind of the equivalent of a liberal arts degree. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great to hear. And Miss Barber, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, something about me. Well, I'm, I'm not a Marylander. I'm actually a New Yorker. Uh, born in upstate New York, and what got me out of New York was I married my husband who was in the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got to travel around the world, and that was pretty exciting. Um, since I married somebody in the military, I ended up getting a job with the federal government because I figured wherever he was assigned, I could always easily get a job. And I actually retired uh, in 2003 after 28 years of working for Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been to places like, uh, well, Fort Devens, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where my son was born. But we spent eight years in Heidelberg, Germany, which was absolutely incredible. And then he got an assignment here at Fort Meade, and we've been here ever since 19, uh, 1988. So mm -hmm. we've kind of become Marylanders. And you uh -huh. and I have a little bit in common, don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, every time we meet, we talk, and we always find out we get more and more in common. Um, I started Coffee Connections uh, seven years ago um, as a way of connecting women, professional, entrepreneurial, and business women. Um, but you know, it's just been a, it's just been a, a, a great experience. Uh, working for the government was wonderful. I had a great career, mm -hmm. um, but not very creative. You know, because they tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do mm -hmm. it, and whatever. So finally, finally tapping into a little bit of more of my creative side was really good, and that's what Coffee Connections has been allowed me to do. Which leads us to our next question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want you guys to know that I am just so happy to have met you both uh, while networking uh, with Chesapeake Coffee Connections. Um, it really has opened up a new world of uh, opportunity for me to meet small business owners in a completely relaxed atmosphere, no heavy sales pitches, mm -hmm. no rush conversation. So Barbara, tell us about Coffee Connections and what prompted you to start such a group? Well, I do have a business. My husband and I work for a little catalog company. We work out of our home. And one of the things though, that we always worry about is, of course, we needed to connect. And obviously, everybody needs people in their business. 
So I was away on a business trip with one of my partners from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and we kind of came up with the idea of um, looking for local businesses mm -hmm. that would be willing to host a meeting. So when we got back from that meeting, I started going around. I went to uh, Chico's, uh, unfortunately it's no longer in downtown Annapolis, but I knew the manager and I said, would you be willing to open up an hour and a half early? You provide us a little bit of a breakfast, but I'll get the women there to, to network. And everybody in the community said, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we just, it st just started growing out of that. Um, I created a very simple database, because I'm not too computer literate as my husband will attest. <laughs> uh, but I, I started collecting uh, names and email addresses and just started sending out messages. And sometimes, in, initially the first year, we would get maybe two women showing up, but it was at a shoe store, so we tried on every pair <laughs> of shoes they had. <laughs> Uh, that was really a lot of fun. And, and now we have some events that, that attract 30 to 40 women. Um, and I wanted it to be free. Uh, there mm -hmm. are a lot of networking groups in the area, but they charge a lot of money. Yes, and do. if you're a that small business true. owner, you can't yeah. afford to, to mm -hmm. maintain that level of ex expense. And at advertising in local publications and newspapers, too, is very costly. So I figured, let's do this for free. And, and I can tell you that the local businesses have been absolutely incredible supporting Coffee Connections. In fact, after, after the first year, I had people calling me up saying, mm -hmm. I want to host a meeting, I want to host mm -hmm. a meeting, will you have it here? I've already got people calling me now uh, saying, will you host a meeting? And I said, well, it's going to have to be next year because we've already kind of booked up for the year. From Chesapeake Coffee Connections, which is focused primarily in the Annapolis area, um, we now have expanded to the Severna Park area, Bowie Crofton area, um, South County, Calvert County. Uh, in September, we're having our inaugural meeting for the Eastern Shore Coffee Connections. And my, uh, my partner, Randy, in Lancaster has two groups going in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area. And there's also one on Treasure Coast in Florida. So um, we're kind of getting our, our word out. Now, is this uh, copyrighted, um, or is it kind of free-flowing? It, well, the idea is, and our, um, and our little motto, let's brew up some business, which mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. I have to give my husband credit for that, but that, <laughs> that I, have, mm -hmm. I have trademarked mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, but it's great. Like I said, we've got women from all kinds of business, whether it's a stay-home, uh, mm -hmm. People like Kim with, with arts, uh, we get women in the banking industry. It's for every woman, uh, no matter what you do. And it's, I wanted it so that they, if you can if you fit it in your schedule, then you come to the meeting. And if you can't come, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. We don't punish you. And the stores love it. Um, one example, there was a, there's a new boutique that opened up in the Annapolis Mall. And I went in there, and of course, I always introduce myself and tell them about the group. Uh, two days later, after I got home, she already called me up. She says, can we have a meeting sometime this month? And we did, and we had something like 28 women there. I was there. Huh? I was there. Oh, yeah, you were there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes, and the amazing thing is, um, it was the first time, it was a great, kind of like a grand opening, mm -hmm. but they were gracious enough not only to provide us breakfast, but they gave us 50% off everything in the store. So she had... She had some significant income on her cash register before she opened her door. No, that was Scott and Molly's. No, no, that was uh, S uh, Sandro Ferroni. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, that, that was one. pretty. That yeah. was pretty remarkable. That's a, the first store in the United States. But, oh, okay. Uh, it came out of Rome, Italy. Oh, oh okay. wow. Yeah, and that she sent. Where is it located? It's right in the mall next to. Um, if you come in the um, ca uh, California Pizza, Pizza Kitchen door okay. and hang a left, it's about a few stores down there. Okay. It's a lovely boutique mm -hmm. and. Um, but I mean, everybody has been so gracious, and mm -hmm. the, I think the shop owners kind of kind of like what I do because it does get it does get women in the it, women in the store, mm -hmm. and so many times when we go into place like Annapolis Tea and Spice mm -hmm. Company on Main Street, the first time we had a meeting there, I was the only person in the group that had ever been in that store. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, the other 17 women, that was their first time in the store. Well, that's what I like about Coffee Connection. Yeah. Somebody who's been in the county this long, and there's still new businesses opening up all the time. And like mm -hmm. Scott and Molly's that yes. you mentioned. And you can't get your hands around everything. So right. I think you're doing a great service. I know for me as somebody who works for the county. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and Kim, I was completely blown away hearing you talk about your personal journey mm -hmm. to becoming an artist. Um, can you share that experience with us and talk about that entity that um, helped you, served as a catalyst for helping you become uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
connected to your spiritual self? Well, as I said before, I have always kind of dabbled in creative things and a lot of crafts with my children and all that kind of thing. And I worked for one year as um, an assistant in a Montessori school. And then about one or two months into my second year, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it kind of turned my whole world upside down. I ended up having two years of treatment. And actually after, and, and that was about eight years ago, so I'm doing really well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look great. Cancer free for you look great. several years now, thank you. <laughs> but one of the things that I found in that journey was a wonderful little place called Annapolis Wellness House. Mm -hmm. And this is a place, nonprofit organization that welcomes in anybody who has, ha has cancer, has had cancer, is undergoing treatment. Their family, their friends, anyone mm -hmm. they know mm -hmm. can go and receive um, treatments like massage, Reiki, um, also um, there's support groups there for children and I mean it's just a wonderful little place and one of the things that they were offering was called therapeutic art mm -hmm. and I thought ah, that's right up my alley so let me go and I was kind of feeling disconnected um, you know you go through something like cancer it, it's just very life-changing mm -hmm. and I just I wanted to get into a place where there were people that could understand what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And and this is not this is for any type of cancer. Anybody that has any type of cancer or any connection with anyone. So I went and and it was just fun. I think the very first time we were doing watercolor painting. Mm -hmm. And what I did wasn't anything to speak of, mm -hmm. but I found that I just loved working with the paints. What I was doing then was really kind of um, expressing my emotions and mm -hmm. getting my, you know, everything that was kind of inside of me out in a creative way and using color. I love color mm -hmm. and I had all these paint colors at my disposal. And, and then every now and then they would have somebody come in, volunteer and actually teach something and back then it was mostly painting they've expanded now their therapeutic art they make jewelry and, nice. and do all kinds of other things but somebody named Liz Lind um, was coming in to volunteer and she's local in Annapolis area she she used to have a shop in Eastport um, she closed that shop down and is back home which I believe is near Ocean City Maryland somewhere mm -hmm. but her art is all over Annapolis mm -hmm. um, she's a wonderful artist and what she was, was her name again? Liz Lind, okay. L-I-N-D, hmm. and she was coming in one day and she brought hydrangeas, my favorite flower, and said, we're going to learn to paint hydrangeas. So I was like, ah, now I can really paint something that might look good and that I'm going to really love. And she, you know, everybody kind of did their own thing. She put the flowers in front of us and she showed us some techniques and mine actually turned out really good. <laughs> I have since sold the original and, and several mm -hmm. prints of it. Mm -hmm. But that's, I kind of think that was a turning point for me. And I was like, oh, not only do I love this, it, it helps me. It, it was very healing mm -hmm. for me. And, um, you know, on a spiritual level too. And it was just this part of me that I didn't know was inside. I mean, I, I really think all of us have creative right. ability, but some of us just don't tap into mm -hmm. it. And, and that just, that was the beginning of it. After that, I, I'd say for about a year, I just went to therapeutic art and kind of did my own thing. And then I was like, you know, I really love this and I want to develop some skills. So I started taking classes. Mm -hmm. I actually joined the Muddy Creek Artist Guild. I can talk about that a little bit later, but mm -hmm. I met somebody at one of those meetings and I don't know what made her come up to me. Sometimes these things just happen mm -hmm. and, you go, and you go with it she came up to me and she said, you know, I'm thinking about teaching. I've never taught how to paint watercolor. She's a watercolor artist. And I'd like to try and it would be free for you because I'm just experimenting. And so I was one of her students and one other person. We went to her house. She's a, a wonderful watercolor artist. And I learned a lot from her. I was with her for 
I believe over a year, pretty much weekly. And um, free, <laughs> free from this My wonderful art. art, <laughs> watercolor artist. And then from there, I mean, it, just so many connections. I was doing a show, I ended up doing shows with the Guild. Mm -hmm. And at one of them I met another person who happened to live in my neighborhood, didn't know at the time, but Jane Hallowell Green, mm -hmm. she is somebody that I started taking classes from. She has since moved away, but she was part of the Annapolis Watercolor Club, another amazing watercolor artist, and I was taking classes with her through Anne Arundel Community College. So um, non-credit, but through the college. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot from both of them. They really helped me grow as an artist, and it, it's just, it's just been one of these things unfolded. I, I didn't have any real goals when I first started. I was painting because I loved painting. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of unfolded. And I, I started, you know, somebody saw something they liked and they wanted it. And before I knew it, I was selling art. And I was like, wait a minute. When did that Maybe happen? this could be a business. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could actually have a business that I love. <laughs> I think art and music are like universal. It yeah. appeals to a lot of people, but you have yes. to put it in front of people. And, and then, like I said, we'll talk about developing a, a artist type businesses. Mm -hmm. can be very difficult. Oh, yes. Very challenging. <laughs> yeah, well, I love that story. It's so, so heartfelt. Um, but in my estimation, Coffee Connections um, has become a, su a success with women business owners locally. and. Uh, I've met a few of your, friend, your mm -hmm. people from the Eastern Shore. Can you talk about some of the establishments a little bit more that, that have sponsored your events? I know you mentioned it earlier. Right. And um, give us some memorable moments <laughs> <laughs> from that experience. Well, one of the, uh, I always try to find, obviously, uh, new local, local places. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there was a gal in my group who worked for Extraordinaire Limousine Service. And mm -hmm. she said, well, why don't we do a networking event in a limousine? <laughs> and I said, okay, <laughs> let's do it. So uh, we all plan to meet uh, the limousine at the parking lot in Harbor Center. And uh, 15 of us piled into the limousine. And uh, one of the gals brought two bottles of wine and some wine glasses, because we weren't driving. And we drove to Baltimore. My son at the time was managing a little cafe in Fells Point called Tivol. So I had it set up there with him that we would go there, do our networking, have a little bit of, of food. Mm -hmm. And so we drove to Baltimore, went to Tivo, spent about 30, 35 minutes, then we piled back into the limousine, drove back to Annapolis, and that was one event. Uh, another, another gal in the group uh, was, had some close connections with Royal Caribbean Cruise Line mm. and uh, made arrangements for our group to go on board ship when it was in dock, uh, and it was it was amazing. For $10, they gave us a three-course meal with wine, mm. a tour of the ship. I'm sorry I missed that. I, I know. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Where were you? That was, that was pretty amazing. A tour of the ship. Then we had, and then they put us in a little private room, and we had uh, fashions from Soma and Chico's. So we had a little mm. fashion show. And then we had door prizes. And we were the only group that, that was ever allowed on board a ship that we weren't either travel agents or passengers. And that one I had a waiting list, and 35 of us went wow. to the port, and that was How'd a lot of fun. How did you pull that one off? I don't know. It's, it's, uh, the gal that made the arrangements, she says, oh, this is what I need. Of course, we needed all documentation right. and security information, and she got us all clear through security. Mm -hmm. And we all had a meet in the parking lot, and they, they escorted us on board ship, and it was, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Fun. Um, <laughs> every uh, Christmas or in de early December, we do a black dress networking event. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, black dresses are required. <laughs> uh, we hold that. We've been holding it in the past few years at the little Italian restaurant on West Street called Luna Blue. Erin, the the manager there, owner there, she closes the restaurant down, so it's just uh, for coffee connections, and she puts on an amazing spread of food and um, wine and other drinks. And there's a swag bag that uh, I put together. From, uh, with input from all the other Coffee Connections members, whether it's a service coupon or a sample of a product. Everybody gets a swag bag, and that's in early December. And then my uh, big annual event is uh, in November, I host a holiday extravaganza. Okay. Um, Coffee Connections, uh, one of the things that we require is it has our meetings, our regular morning meetings has to be at a brick and mortar business. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of women that are members that have a business that 
they work out of their house. Mm -hmm. uh, so this holiday extravaganza gives those women the opportunity of showcasing their service and a product mm -hmm. um, during the holidays for holiday shopping. And this year it's going to be at the Annapolis Moose Lodge on Crownsville Road. We'll have over 25 vendors there. Uh, it'll be open to the public and it gives them a chance to to uh, to showcase, I said, like I said, their their service or business. I'm always looking for unique ways of having many. Mm -hmm. Oh, in September we're going to Doden Vineyards. I'm going to that. That's <laughs> great. With my husband. That's awesome. Have to get our tickets. Got to get tickets. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, uh, there's going to be a wine tour. Mm -hmm. It's going to mm -hmm. be wine tasting and food, and of course networking. And mm -hmm. uh, we don't people don't realize that how many vineyards are in Anne Arundel there's County. A lot. There's a lot of vineyards. Lot. I don't. It's yeah. pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking for new stores, like you mentioned, Scout and Molly's. It was a brand new store in the area. Boho Nation in Severna Park is a relatively new uh, store. So I'm always looking for unique boutiques. There's a brand new uh, spa opening up right on West Street called Sedona. And I met one of the mm. managers there this past uh, Sunday at the Arts Fest. And we are already talking about next year hosting a meeting there. So we're already starting to work on our 2017 schedule. So if somebody's wow. interested in getting in contact with you, how would they do that? Yeah, you can send, uh, send me an email at chesapeakecoffeeconnections at gmail.com. Well, that's Pretty easy simple. Enough. That's easy enough. Yeah. Uh, Kim, your transformation into an artist um, has brought you in contact with kindred spirits. Um, yes. I have a sister who is an artist, and when she was little, she used to do the same thing. She used to draw, she used to sing, mm -hmm. she played the flute, <laughs> and, and then she loved to draw. So one thing I know about artists is that they don't often see themselves as a business or a business entity. Very true. Um, that saying, ours, artists, art for the sake of art and not for the sake of money is their thing. Mm -hmm. So placing value on your art and your creations can be kind of difficult and collaborating yes. with lots of other artists can help give you a perspective on your value. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the Money Creek Artist Guild? Yes. And, which I understand you're a member of. I am. This is, I believe, my fourth year as mm -hmm. a member of the Guild. It is the ninth year for the Guild. We're going into our ninth year. Um, we have over a hundred members. Mm -hmm. Our little byline is a roving band of intrepid artists, <laughs> <laughs> meaning we, we travel around South County. Mm -hmm. It's Muddy Creek Artist Guild. There's a road called Muddy Creek Road. It goes from basically Edgewater down to, I think, like Shadyside, mm -hmm. Maryland. And the guild is for people, artists that live south of the South River. Mm -hmm. in Anne Arundel County, so basically between Edgewater and Tracy's Landing. Um, and we have shows in different locations in the county. We have gone out into Annapolis, but we really try to focus in South County. That's where our artists are. Mm -hmm. you, you live or work in South County. Mm -hmm. You can be a member if you live or work in south of the South River. And intrepid, meaning just various types of artists. There's people who paint, people, a lot of photographers, sculptors, woodworkers, textile artists, you name it, we have mm -hmm. it in the guild. So when we have a show like a holiday show, we do a couple of big shows a year and then mm -hmm. people who are interested can get involved in some smaller shows in between. But when we have our big shows, we have 50 plus artists. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a great organization. It really helped me um, build my confidence as an artist because you know I, I did my first show and I, I sold a few things and I met a lot of people and as a matter of fact I forgot to mention the name of this wonderful watercolor artist Ruth Bailey <laughs> she's the one that I uh, met and she is the one I took classes from um, and it's just really been a stepping stone for me I have lots of friends through the guild and um, we have some things coming up Mm -hmm. In October, we're doing our first ever open to the public studio tour. So I think there's 20 or 30 of us. I'll be on the tour and we're opening up our art studios. Most of us have studios either actually in our homes mm -hmm. or maybe a little building on our property. And um, it, we're, we're 
reaching out to you know DC and Baltimore and we're really trying to to draw a larger audience and art lovers mm -hmm. um, into the guild and that will be October 15th and 16th a Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. so there's a meeting a place where everybody goes in Galesville it's called River Gallery one mm -hmm. of our members owns River Gallery and that's where you'll get your map for the different studios on the tour. Does it cost anything? <laughs> I, I don't believe it does. Oh, okay, that's nice. Don't quote me on that. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, most people who, who support the arts don't yeah. mind paying. I mean, I'm sure if it does, it's a nominal fee. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 10 bucks or something, but I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. I, I can check on that mm -hmm. <laughs> and get back to you. Um, so, and then our holiday tour this year will be two weekends, November, I don't remember the exact dates, but it's like mm -hmm. the weekend in a uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mid-November, so somewhere around 13, 14, and then the following weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that will be in Edgewater across from, it's a restaurant called The Steakhouse, mm -hmm. where there used to be, it, it's where there used to be a blockbuster. It's a huge space, and we mm -hmm. really transform it. Mm -hmm. We were there last year for our holiday show as well, but this year we have two weekends. That's where you'll get to see lots and lots of art mm -hmm. from a lot of different artists. Nice. So it's, a, it's just a, a great you know, non-profit organization for artists in the area and I love it. Mm -hmm. See, those are the things that yeah. I've never even mm -hmm. heard about until I met Coffee Connection. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that I did. Um, yeah. So weren't you a, a, a um, Head of the guild at one point in time? Were you the president or vice mm. president? No. Yeah. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Maybe you should be. One yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day I aspire to that. No. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm I'm involved and in, uh, um, actually I've done some solo shows too outside mm -hmm. of the guild in different places and I do like to bring music in. It's funny that you mentioned that. I think when we do our shows, there's always refreshments. Mm -hmm. and live music and it really is just that whole artsy atmosphere that's nice and and yeah so i'm not really sure who we have lined up for this year but it's always good so well, y'all have to gather, come out <laughs> yeah i'm gonna gather a few friends and we'll be by there to see you yeah and if anybody's interested mm -hmm. the website is um, www.muddycreekartistsguild.org and you can go on there and and see the samples of work of the different artists and Every, all the information for the upcoming events will be on the Looking site. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And Barbara. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you are such a forward-thinking, focused individual, always making strategic moves and helping us all to connect. I can truthfully say I've enjoyed my time networking with you and your group. And same here. Mm -hmm. What is your vision for Chesapeake Coffee Connections over the next few years? Well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get, uh, I, I have the infrastructure for Charm City, in Baltimore, and um, of course I got Eastern Shore coming up. We've got a couple of uh, locations that could use a coordinator, so I'm in the process. I want to get those going mm -hmm. again. Uh, I have a, a gal in uh, California that uh, is talking about starting one out in the LA area, so uh, wow. that'd be pretty exciting. That? Really? Exciting. I don't know. I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, um, so we're just going to continue to try to, you know, expand. And mm -hmm. well, I think the the best thing that ever has come out of Coffee Connections, obviously, is meeting amazing women in our mm -hmm. community. Absolutely amazing. But there, there's never a meeting that doesn't go by where I get a phone call later and saying, you know, I was at the meeting today and there was a gal there that does uh, financial planning. Sounds and I like really, me. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I, what I love about it, and I'm so, I'm so proud of the women that come to the meetings is the fact that we, they really do focus about doing business with other women in the group. And which is nice because then you, you know where they live, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, how you create this relationship. And today, um, everything is so very competitive. Uh, the key to any successful business is creating those relationships. And mm -hmm. Coffee Connections mm -hmm. gives women an opportunity of doing that for free. Yeah, and just being able to talk to each other. Um, you know, most of the women I've met were just whole strangers. Yep. And I, I looked at you a few times before I realized I had met you a long time ago. Right. Um, and then when I met you at the um, Local, Local by, by Design, design. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and there was so much going on. I said, I've got to talk to her later. So I got her card, but I didn't get other cards. So, right. so, I know, know, and I owe you those cards. <laughs> she has <laughs> all the, that info. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other places, too, that uh, was just absolutely incredible for me as well is the National TV and Radio Museum. Yes, I enjoyed uh, that Oh, my place. goodness. That's in, in off, off of Mitchellsville Road in Bowie. Yes. I mean, anybody listening to this, you've got to make a point to go visit this. If you want a trip back into memory lane, to the mm -hmm. back to the very first TV, it's absolutely phenomenal what they have in that little house. It's mm -hmm. incredible. I, you really owe it to yourself to, to go take a step back in time. But again, it, if it wasn't for Coffee Connections, I would have never known mm -hmm. about that place. Mm -hmm. So it's good for me I too. I heard about it. And when I saw it on your listing, I said, and that's the reason yeah. for me to go. Because yeah. I always said I'll, I was going to go on a Saturday. So you, you keep bringing those opportunities uh, for people to get connected. I love it. Oh, I great. It. I enjoy yeah. doing it, too. Yeah. I, I have to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because <clears throat> the meeting at Local by Design yes. that you put together mm -hmm. just, what, about a month yeah. or so ago? Mm -hmm. That's where I met Joanne. Right. And of course, you were there, and I met a lot of other artists. Can I talk about Local by Design? Sure. Local by Design yep. is a pretty new store in downtown Annapolis, yep. 109 Main Street, oh, there you Annapolis, go. right down by the water. And it is a neat little place. It's, it's kind of a, a co op y thing, not exactly, but it's probably about 55 or so artists in there. Again, yeah, like the Muddy Creek Artists Guild, a lot of different um, mediums in one place, art mediums, and because of that meeting that I was at, I am now <laughs> one of the artists Yay! in the shop awesome. in downtown Annapolis, and, and that really was one of my goals, yes. was to kind of get into a place like that where there's more exposure and one day even beyond, but you know, baby steps. Mm -hmm. But I'm really grateful to you for putting that together <laughs> and that I was able to Get up and be there at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, and I made connections in that one yeah. meeting. Yeah. And now I'm connecting with the other artists. Right. And it, it, what you do is incredible. Thank it really you. is. Thank yeah. you. And it's it not is. that rushy um, speed dating. I no. mean, I'm not going to mention the other organizations, but those, they have their mm -hmm. place. But this is like totally different, very relaxed. And I think women in particular, you, know, you go into these networking places and you're with strangers, you can feel the cold air floating right over you. <laughs> so you have to. I've okay. never experienced that in Coffee Connection. Uh -huh. yeah. Never. Yeah. It's like, yeah. to me, it's like, you know, going to a family event. And mm -hmm. I mean that. It's mm -hmm. very relaxed and comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have our core women that, that I could count on basically, you know, showing up all the time. And then we always have new women coming. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's great. Uh, love getting the word out. We have over 3,000 names and email addresses just on the Maryland mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gmail. And somebody once asked me, what happens if like a thousand of those women show up? I said, well, <laughs> it never happens. That will never happen. <laughs> that will never happen. <laughs> that will never happen. Um, but you know what? It, it's a small enough group so you can at least learn more about each other and create that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thrilled. So this question is for Kim. Mm -hmm. um, as you're generating a livelihood, um, um, and I know it presents headaches and heartaches for you to put a pricing on what it is that you do. That's the most difficult <laughs> task as an artist. <laughs> so hard. What are some of the challenges you face in growing your business, and what's your vision for um, developing Blue? We never talked about Blue right. Wave Cottage. Yeah, the name of my next. business is Blue Wave Cottage. Um, you can find me at www.bluewavecottage.com um, and I just came up with that because my studio is in my house mm -hmm. that's where I paint and and the name I, I've called my house Blue Wave Cottage Blue Wave because of the water I live near the water I'm in Anne Arundel County and actually what most people probably don't know is Blue Wave is a type of hydrangea. Blue hydrangeas oh. are my favorite flower. Mm -hmm. I've painted a lot of blue hydrangeas. I will continue <laughs> to paint blue hydrangeas. And, and, um, and I, did, I started out painting things that I love, happy, pretty things, cottages mm -hmm. and flowers and, and beachy things and seashells and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that goes back to my childhood of going to 
you know, Ocean City and Delaware to the beaches as a child. Blue hydrangeas everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and just, I love the whole feeling of the Eastern Shore and, you know, beach towns and any coastal town. That's, that's my place to go to get away and decompress. So that definitely comes through in my art. I'm starting to, you know, dabble in some other things, maybe produce some more spiritual art. Um, and I'm trying other things like watercolor collage, which is I paint papers and I tear them up and I stick them on. And it's kind of hard to explain. You have to go to my mosaic. website gallery and look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's mosaic. yeah, it's like doing a painting with little torn pieces of paper. <laughs> it looks like an actual three-dimensional nice. uh, picture. Beautiful. I learned that from Jane Halliwell Green, mm -hmm. so I have to give her credit for that mm -hmm. in one of her classes. Um, so. Um, challenges just kind of how to get myself out there my you know for people to recognize my art um, and I'm trying to have more of an online presence I I just recently had somebody who I met at Coffee Connections <laughs> Tree Branch Design yes mm -hmm. okay they just redid yep. my website and it's absolutely beautiful um, I'm still working on it still tweaking it but mm. Um, for the most part, it's complete, and so I have pricing on there, and I can sell that way, but I, I really, I, I, I want to be in more locations, right. visit my art in physical locations. Right. Right. So it's just, a, you know what, I think it's a matter of putting together some marketing materials mm -hmm. and just walking the mm -hmm. streets and going into shops. But I, I'm at Local by Design, it's, it's not even been a week. My art just went up mm -hmm. probably five days ago. So for me, that's a really big step. And we'll see how that unfolds and what comes of that. And, um, you know, just, I just got to keep going to meetings. That's and, it. <laughs> got to make those connections. And connecting <laughs> and, you know, thank you for having me on the show. I mean, anything that, that I, is an opportunity to let people know who I am and what I do. You know, and honestly, I paint because I love to paint. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, paint whether people bought my work or not mm -hmm. but it, it is nice yeah. to have other people appreciate what I do and it's very subjective art is very subjective right. so pricing and you know it's a hard thing mm -hmm. it's a it's a hard that's very challenging but a lot of different jurisdictions are creating arts and entertainment districts and yes, because I live closer to Washington DC it's like all over the place and your traditional art um, um, locations like Eastern Market and downtown, mm -hmm. it's starting to flow mm -hmm. over to the Anacostia now. They've got this whole design scheme. Mm -hmm. So maybe between Washington and Annapolis, if more communities would right. develop something, I know have Bowie closer. City Hall now yeah. has art on display, like it's a regular thing mm -hmm. that, that they're doing, which mm -hmm. is right in between Annapolis and D.C. So, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, and you, you know, it's, like, like it's I did with Coffee area. Connections and finding mm -hmm. locations, just walk in and just ask. Mm -hmm. because, Do like Barbara does. Yeah, just walk <laughs> in and ask, hey, I'm an artist, would you be interested in having me put some of the paint, you know, paintings mm -hmm. up in your, mm -hmm. you know, like, like this new salon, you know, they're looking, they might be looking for some artwork. I just read mm -hmm. about that. It might have been an email I got from you. I just read <laughs> something about that. <laughs> Uh, Barbara, also let the audience know that you have a, a, a monthly newsletter that you can send them that will list the locations of your... Yeah, it goes on an email, uh, email address. If you're interested, uh, that's what I would need. I would need your name, um, your email, and a telephone number. But I do send out monthly messages that let people know where the meetings are and what special events are coming up. Uh, we also have a Facebook page called City Coffee Connections because mm -hmm. it's kind of the umbrella for all the locations. Mm -hmm. And what's great, uh, all the members of Coffee Connections can post events on there. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you have an event coming up, you can go ahead and put something on there, and, and it gets the word out through through our Facebook page. Oh, that's good to hear. I'm so glad to have you guys on the show. And Thank uh, you so much for having really us. really nice to be here. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, one more question. Oh, okay. Oh, we're ready. <laughs> As we close out this segment of, um, of our show, could you give our audience words of advice or recommendations? For someone who's interested in starting a small business today, hmm. Kim? Well, I'm really new at this, but I think you have to do something you're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. 
I think to succeed in any business, that's really the key, at least the starting point. Um, beyond that, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it, to be honest, but um, I think what Barbara does is another important aspect of a business is just developing relationships, connecting. Um, I, I'm not sure about the money part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't had to invest a lot to start mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that is unique, I think, to my business. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I don't own a building or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. or I'm not, you know, renting you know, a whole space anywhere. But um, all I can say, honestly, is just do something that you're passionate about and mm -hmm. connect with others who are also passionate about similar things and learn from other people. Yeah. Just learn from each other. That's right. What do you think, Barbara? Well, I, I, Kim said it. You've got you've to be passionate about whatever it is you, you're doing. Uh, like I mentioned, my husband and I run a little catalog business from our house, and uh, we've been with the company now for over 21 years. And, mm -hmm. and the reason why I enjoy doing it is because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's something that people need. There's, uh, it's all bay-friendly, biodegradable um, products. Um, but we don't do any of the heavy lifting the company does. We just let people know that this company is out there. Um, but it, it just made way too much sense. And it's all about wellness. Yes. Uh, wellness, whether it's in a business standpoint, from your health standpoint, from the environment standpoint. Um, and they say if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And, uh, I love right? that. Right. It's, it's true. true. It is true. It's very we true. didn't even practice that. No. <laughs> So yeah, just to, before you start any business, make sure number one that that it's something that you're really passionate about. Make sure that you're in it for the long haul because mm -hmm. it takes a while to mm -hmm. build up uh, any kind of a, a, a type of an income with it. Um, you kind of have kind of you gotta and you gotta have blinders on because there's so much noise out there. There's so much that goes on around us in our daily lives that you can get bogged down by by all that noise. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you need to really figure out a way to filter that out and just keep keep the task at hand um, and, and you will be successful you have to believe in yourself yeah. I don't know about what you do and what other people do but as an artist mm -hmm. you definitely have these voices out there as, oh well you need to work full-time and mm -hmm. that's just a mm -hmm. hobby and right. Right. I disagree yeah that's right you know I mean it, you have to have patience mm -hmm. I am growing and I have expanded and I've sold and I've had commissioned work it's a slow process but this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I'm doing. And I'm not going to let those little voices nope. out there discourage me. I'm just going to keep moving forward and believe in myself. Yeah. All so. right. Thanks, Barbara and Kim, for your insights and recommendations. Stay tuned to Channel 98, Verizon 38 for the Minority Business Report, which airs daily. You can also watch us on YouTube. If you have any comments or suggestions, Regarding this edition of the Minority Business Report, please contact me at the Office of Central Services in Annapolis on 410-222-7620. We are here working for you. Peace and blessings. The following bids are available from the Anne Arundel County Purchasing Office.